Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I will be leading you uh, on this webinar uh, entitled Lean and Six Sigma Introduction. Today we're going to learn um, at a high level about both Lean and Six Sigma. So let's get uh, started. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, in the, the next uh, hour, we are going to first cover uh, a little bit about uh, Six Sigma Development Solutions, which is uh, the company that is hosting this webinar, this free webinar. Um, you, you're going to learn a little bit about uh, who your instructor is, uh, myself, uh, Kevin Clay, and we'll actually uh, talk about that a little bit uh, uh, well, soon. Um, we'll, we'll talk about an introduction to Lean, uh, and then we'll go into uh, an introduction to Six Sigma. Uh, we'll see how these two methodologies really synergize, work well together, but these two methodologies are very different. Uh, they, they really tackle two, uh, two separate parts of, of uh, transformation. Uh, we'll jump from Six Sigma back into Lean, where we're going to spend most of our time talking about the key principles of Lean. Uh, then we'll move into the synergy between both Lean and Six Sigma, uh, which you'll, you should really enjoy that. Um, and we'll move into, uh, finally, uh, talking about how, how we, uh, Six Sigma Development Solutions, uh, help thousands of people both personally uh, and professionally uh, in in organizations to to transform themselves and their organization so we we would like to talk to you about scheduling a uh, what we call a strategy session for us to really help you um, to to progress your career so first of all uh, who am I what what, what gives what gives me, Kevin Clay, the uh, uh, the ability to teach this course? Uh, I am a master of black belts uh, and and a lean master practitioner. Uh, I, I always put quotes around the word master because I don't really think there is one. I think it's a uh, a concept of continuous learning. It's uh, oh, the more you know, the more that you find out that that you can know and and uh, I enjoy that about uh, these methodologies. I've been in this uh, in this space for over 17 years. Um, have operational experience in disciplines like manufacturing. Uh, was a plant manager for a number of years. Uh, distribution, processing, finance, retail sales, uh, insurance, healthcare, IT, nonprofit, and local uh, and state governments. Um, so I, I've been I've been in many different places, many different disciplines, and I've seen many different processes, uh, and that really comes out on our surveys for for both myself and my colleagues uh, uh, that teach within Six Sigma de uh, Development Solutions. Uh, the the one theme we really seem to uh, get in our evaluations over and over is. You know, Kevin, it seems like you, you, you've you actually been in, in our, our building, in our hospital, in our uh, uh, business unit, in our plant, um, because you're talking about the things that we're dealing with. And, and, and it's because we've seen this before. We've seen these same problems. They happen over and over and over again uh, in many different organizations. Um, they, they just replicate. So we, we, we know your problems. We've seen your problems. Um, and that helps us to, as we teach you, to talk about what you're going through. Uh, not only that, but help you to, to understand how you can tackle those problems, how you can uh, 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 take on those opportunities. Uh, and it's an amazing thing to watch um, uh, our, our students and the organizations they belong to transform. So I've instructed personally over 500 plus change agents across multiple disciplines. Uh, change agents are really 
green belts, Six Sigma green belts, uh, lean change agents, black belts, etc. So that's really what we call change agents. I have led over 15 um, implementations, uh, both domestic and global organizations. We work across the globe. We have uh, over 50 contractors uh, strategically placed throughout uh, the globe to, to take on uh, many different uh, uh, implementations, uh, project work, etc. So uh, I personally have led uh, and or mentored over 80 Six Sigma, uh, both industrial and transactional project projects. So uh, my, my, you know, I'm not just uh, hamstring to working in manufacturing organizations. Really, uh, it's a, it's amazing the transformation that can come from this uh, lean and six sigma methodology when it comes to um, service, transactional, uh, finance, uh, retail sales, insurance. Uh, it's amazing how these companies have really started to, to see these methodologies as a, as a way to uh, transform the way they do things. I personally have facilitated over 110 Kaizen. Uh, both Kaizen and workout projects. Workout projects are really uh, more specific to uh, healthcare environments, um, but but they are it, basically a Kaizen. So, like I said, uh, both myself and, and my colleagues uh, have been uh, to many different places, the many different organizations, and and witnessed many different things. So we use these, these um, stories as a way to transfer knowledge. And uh, as we go through uh, this, this short webinar, I'm, I'm going to use some of these stories to, to kind of help you to understand, you know, a little bit more about both Lean and Six Sigma. Now, you'll, you'll see here that Lean, uh, it says really Lean Enterprise. Most people think that that lean is really lean manufacturing. Uh, lean doesn't really care about the discipline you're in. Lean just really cares about waste, uh, the waste in the waste in in a process in a system. Now Six Sigma um, deals with uh, understanding the variation uh, in a process or a system two very separate methodologies that really tackle a process from different standpoints. Lean really looking at the complexity uh, that exists in a system and that complexity, you know, uh, as it gets more and more complex, as the process gets more and more complex, it takes up more time. All right. And that's really what, what Lean is, is interested in, getting rid of that complexity, therefore regaining that time. Six Sigma, on the other hand, is really interested in, in, in what causes variation in, in a process or a system. Um, what, 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 what causes a, a three-shift operation um, and, and teams on each shift making the same exact thing to do it three different ways? That, that variation leads to... to uh, problems, chaos, uh, and that leads to defects, and defects lead to customer dissatisfaction. So at the root of that is that variation. And Six Sigma says, you know, why is that variation existing? Where, where does it come from? And how do we solve it? How do we control it? Um, how do we how do we improve it, optimize it, and control it? Okay, so let's let's first talk about lean. Uh, again, uh, lean is not lean manufacturing, uh, lean healthcare, lean lean finance. Lean really doesn't care about the discipline; it just cares about the waste in the process. So when when I talk about lean, um, I, I like to use uh, the example of a a pipe. All right. Think of just in your mind. Think of a uh, let's say a three foot length of steel pipe. All right. 
three foot length of steel pipe. Um, and let's say that the process is, is what is in, inside of that pipe, all right? And you start the process at one end of the pipe. When you enter in through one end, let's say the left end, you, you, when you enter that pipe, right, you can only enter it from one side and you can only exit it from the other side, the right side. Now, while you're in the pipe, you're considered a uh, whip, work in progress, right? And it takes a certain amount of time to get from one end of the pipe to the other end of the pipe, all right? So uh, again, you, you have this element of whip, which is work in process, all right? Which means how much is in the pipe? How, how, how much stuff do we have in the pipe? And then the length of time it takes you to get from one end of the pipe to the other, all right? Uh, uh, I, I call this, actually I don't call this, but uh, it, it is called, uh, it is defined in an equation, and that equation is PCT, process cycle time. Process cycle time is a function of whip over exit rate, or how long does it take to exit the pipe, right? So the more I have in whip, the more stuff I have in that pipe, the more things that I have in that pipe that haven't exited that pipe, the longer that that piece at the at the end, all right, I'm sorry, at the beginning of the pipe, on that left side of the pipe, the longer it's going to take for that part to get through to the end of the pipe, because everything else has to exit the pipe as well. All right, so life cycle, which you see here in this first paragraph, um, is is basically what we're what we're interested in in lean. Uh, how do we shorten the life cycle of materials, products, transactions, and information? How do we shorten the amount of time it takes for that piece to enter the pipe and then get through the pipe and exit the pipe? All right, so let's, uh, let's put that in, in another uh, process. Uh, it could be the process of um, uh, an outpatient uh, surgery. All right, it could be the process of, of creating a widget. Okay, it could be the process of, of uh, a transacting a, a transaction. All right, I'll give you another, another uh, uh, story uh, that really brings this to life. So let's say that um, you're at Disneyland uh, and it's it's uh, it, it's in March. Say it's early March. It's when, it's when the uh, the park first opens, and you are at uh, Space Mountain, uh, and you're standing in a line at Space Mountain. Now, not a not a lot of people in the in the park uh, during this this time. Maybe you go uh, on a weekday. Not a lot of people in the park, so there's not a lot of people in line. Okay, but but you look you look at the line itself, and there's these steel bars that go back and forth and back and forth. But there just isn't a lot of people standing in 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 those uh, in that big long line that is waiting for more people. That uh, has a capacity for a lot more people. So let's say there's there's only 60 people in the line, and you're the 60th person. So that that's whip, right? That's work in process. There are 60 pieces of work in process, 60 people. You're the 60th person in line. There is one, uh, one person, uh, a teenage kid, uh, and he is seating two people per minute. He is, he is seating two people per minute. Okay, it's, how long is it going to take you to, to get from the back of the line all the way up to being seated? All right, again, if he's seating two people per minute, it's going to take you 30 minutes. All right, so um, let's say that, that you go again, but this time you go in August. All right, uh, peak season, you go in August on a weekend. Now you go right back to Space Mountain. And you see that there's not uh, 60 people in line. There are 240 people in line. So 
now the whip has, has increased. Now the, the work in process has increased. All right. Now you're not gonna you, you're not gonna you're not gonna uh, be in line, stay in line for uh, 30 minutes. Now it's gonna be two hours that you're sitting in line. Okay. The pipe didn't increase. The pipe nothing nothing changed in the pipe. Those steel bars going back and forth. Nothing changed there. What changed was the amount of whip in the process. All right. Now, in that same process, it, the same teenager is seating two people per minute. So your exit rate didn't increase either. Okay, so if your exit rate doesn't increase, but your whip increases, then your process cycle time, the amount of time you stay in the process, is going to uh, increase. So it, it's funny that... that uh, uh, the Disney Corporation, you know, for a long time had had this this fixed idea that the only way that, that you can ride a ride is to stay in the line. Uh, otherwise, it would be chaos. People would be fighting each other to get to their front of the line. And and the fixed thinking was, you know, you have to stay in the line. But we don't go to the parks to stand in line. Standing in line to us is a waste. We're not enjoying ourselves. We're not eating. We're not in shops. We're not riding other rides. So that doesn't add to customer dissatisfaction. Well, in the, the economic downturn uh, in the U.S. really hit the Disney Corporation pretty hard. Um, uh, a couple of years later, uh, there, there was some financial um, knowledge that told uh, the Disney Corporation they were losing a lot of money. Uh, some people did some calculations and found out they were losing a lot of money uh, in in people standing in line. Now, how do you lose how do you lose money by people standing in line? Correct. You lose money by people standing in line because while you're standing in line, you're not uh, you're not spending money on food. You're not spending money in concessions. You're not spending money uh, in shops. So d the Disney Corporation did uh, kind of stuck to their fixed thinking at first and, and started to build uh, little shops in the line, actually, that you could walk through while, while in the line. All right. And, and that somewhat uh, uh, relieved that, uh, that problem, but not much because they were still thinking within the, within the paradigm uh, of you have to stay in the line. Well, today somebody had some, what well, didn't happen today, but today there's a new process. And this new process came from somebody really thinking outside of the box. Um, and I'm sure most of you know uh, about this process. It's called Fast Pass. So the Fast Pass lets you either, either pre register or register while you're in the park for, for a ride. So I can walk up to a ride or I can pre-register for the ride and, um, and, and I know that when it's my turn to ride the ride, I can just walk up to the ride and get on. Okay, now that shortened the line. It really didn't shorten the line. It didn't shorten the wait time, but what it did, what it did was it allowed the, the people in the park to do what's called parallel processing. All right. So while I'm waiting for the ride, what what else can I do? I can now go to concessions. I can now go to um, uh, stores, etc. Not only that, but a lot of the lesser popular rides were, were not being uh, ridden as much. Therefore, they weren't being funded uh, and were becoming disrepair. So now. While I'm waiting on the more popular rides like Space Mountain, I can I can now ride some of the less popular rides, uh, which really in Lean we call that balancing line balancing. All right, while we're while we're waiting on one process, we could be adding value by doing another process instead of waiting in line, uh, wasting time. So it, it's amazing what they came up with. Uh, with this fast pass. Now they couldn't have come out come out with this fast pass 
unless they learn to think differently. And the two words that are really important on this, this page are the first two words, lean thinking. I, I go into companies every week uh, that, that really I, I, I witness the same thing over and over again. It kind of goes along with, with one of my favorite quotes. You can't solve problems with the same thinking you used when you created the problem. Uh, and this is a quote by Albert Einstein. I go into a lot of companies every every week, uh, and and I see processes that that were improved by a team uh, of people, and that team of people were the same people that created the the problem in the first place. And because they ha they don't have any different way of thinking, they they don't have any new knowledge. What they do is they, they actually create the same problem. It just looks differently. They, they, they reformat the problem, but, but they don't really get to the root cause. And, and that kind of goes along with another quote. It's not really a quote, but uh, um, what's the definition of insanity? Well, the definition is loosely to um, do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. All right. So by solving a problem with the same thinking that got you into the problem, uh, that's insanity. Lean thinking is a way of looking at a problem from a different angle, through different glasses. Uh, and it's an amazing way because we, we, in most cases, without spending any money, without spending well, very, or with spending very few resources, you can significantly transform uh, a process, even an organization, uh, very quickly. So, the the goal of lean is really to minimize work. All right, by focusing on what's called non-value added activities. Now, when we say minimize work, what we're saying is minimize complexity. Most processes, over time, just get longer and longer and larger and fatter and more cumbersome. We have a tendency in business to start out as a mom and pop shop in a garage, and as we grow, as we as we get larger, and we go from uh, mom and pop shop or a garage to to a building, to a larger building, to departments, to sites, to regions, to to countries, the the processes that we have uh, just they seem to grow and grow and grow. And what used to take hours now takes weeks. So the goal of Lean is really uh, focus on and, and, and really understand what in the process doesn't add value to the customer. All right. And, and that's what we try and get rid of. As we get rid of those non-value added activities, we reduce complexity. We reduce complexity. Uh, and that, that, Reduction of complexity, that reduction of steps in the process, helps us to to shorten the process. Every step we take out of the process uh, it took a certain amount of time, so we remove that step, uh, and therefore we regain time. Uh, and it's again an amazing thing to to watch this happen. So. Let's talk about the house of lean, the, this concept called the house of lean. All right. I, it, it, I, I get a lot of people that come to, to, uh, to my open enrollment classes that, that I have all over the, uh, all over the globe, uh, all over the U.S. and all over the world. Um, and and uh, they're, they're uh, mandated by their company to come in and uh, get a green belt or a lean agent certification uh, and then come back and save the world. All right. Well, I tell them right off the bat in the first uh, about two hours of my class, I and my colleagues let them understand that uh, it's not going to happen. You're, you're, you're not going to learn these tools, these methodologies and go back and save your company. Um, uh, your company has really kind of set you up for failure. Now, I don't want you to uh, think, think of that as a negative thing because when you come to our class, you will learn some amazing tools 
that you personally, it, it will change the way you, you work. It will change the way you think about a process. And you, you in your organization, will, will become a powerhouse. But for you to change your organization, um, uh, you, you, you will constantly uh, be fighting battles that, that you won't be able to win. You'll, you'll step into other people's sandboxes. You'll step into other people's functions. You'll step into other people's departments that really don't understand Lean or Six Sigma. Uh, and those people will be very defensive about their processes. Uh, you'll step in their sandbox and the fight will ensue and, and you'll get punched in the eye. Uh, and, and that's kind of a derogatory statement, but that's really what happens is it's, it starts fights, whether they be hierarchical fights uh, and I've actually seen a few a few physical fights because we, we don't really understand uh, the methodology. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly kind of take you through what it what it what it takes to really build uh, a sustainable implementation of uh, Lean and or Six Sigma. All right. So once we learn these methodologies. Unless we have this house built, uh, it's not going to do us a whole lot of good. So, uh, you know, I, I usually ask my, my students, um, uh, you know, what, what does it take to build a house? What, what are the steps in building a house? What is the first thing you need when, when you build a house? All right. And they usually come back to me and say, well, first you need a plan. And that's exactly correct. It, you, you can't swing a hammer. Uh, and start swinging a hammer at nails until you understand what you're building. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, it, your house might not look that good. Okay, need a plan. Uh, once once you have a real plan, once you've vetted the plan out, once you've you've planned your implementation of of Lean and Six Sigma, plan it to the T. Um, every little aspect of, of of the deployment needs to be planned first. Once that plan is put in, uh, once that plan has been developed, the first structure that we built, that, that we built, I'm sorry, is the foundation. Uh, the foundation is, is very, very important. So when you build a house, what happens if you build a house on a weak foundation? Well, most of you will say that, that the house will uh, uh, eventually uh, crumble. It, it won't, won't last, it won't sustain. Uh, again, I get a lot of people that come into to my uh, open enrollment classes that that are are trying to go and and uh, improve processes without a foundation at all. Uh, and what happens to a house that's built on no foundation? Uh, it doesn't last very long. So before we can go in and start um, solving problems through Lean and Six Sigma. Uh, where we can go in and systematically eliminate waste, we first have to have that that foundation. So that foundation, what is it made up? Let's talk about that. The foundation, the first part of the foundation, uh, and the most important part is is the blessing from above. All right, not only the blessing, uh, but your executives have their own responsibilities in an implementation of Lean and or Six Sigma. They, they have their own responsibilities. Um, really, their responsibilities don't change too much. The, what, what changes in their responsibilities are the metrics that, that they're, they're now vetting your organization uh, by. All right, their metrics change. But, but their processes uh, don't change too much. Now, some added added duties to your executives is now they, they have to be fully engaged in this implementation. They have to be the cheerleaders. They, they have to push this, push this down through the ranks and say, this is not something that we might do. This is not something that we're doing on the side. This is what we're doing. This is now going to be built into the DNA of our company. So th those are very powerful words when, when coming from your, your top executives in your organization. 
But not only do they have to say that, but they, they have to walk, uh, walk the talk uh, and, and have to lead by example. So the cornerstone of the foundation is your executives. Um, as part of that foundation, we have an executive training. All right, they train the executives in, in uh, what they need to know, the tools that they need to use. Um, and as part of our training, we come up with the, the five founding projects for the implementation. And we'll talk about those five founding projects here in a minute. So there has to be buying from the top. The next part of the foundation is called your champions or your sponsors. All right. So the sponsors are those business unit leaders. They, their, their job is to make sure um, that those in, in, their, in their business unit, in their department, in their site, uh, understand Lean and Six Sigma. And their job is to be, again, the cheerleader, to cheerlead within their, their site, within their department, within their business unit. Their job is to also be the bulldozer. Okay. Their job is to help uh, to help those people in in that uh, in that area understand that again, Lean and Six Sigma is is the way that we're moving. Champions, their job is to um, sponsor the change agents. We'll get to the change agents in a few minutes as far part of the uh, foundation. Their job is to, to help the change agents understand what are the projects uh, that need to be taken on in order for that department, that site, that business unit, in, in order for them to meet their key performance indicators, in order for them to meet their targets. And those targets are metrics. Okay, so... The, the champions, their job is, is partially to uh, pick projects, all right? Uh, and we'll talk about how, how actually those projects are, are developed because in this case, it's not the champions that are developing the projects. In some cases there are, but, but it's really their whole site, their whole organization, organization that, that really uh, sees the waste and the variation happening uh, and, then, and then identifies that. To, to a system that the champions and the green belts, uh, et cetera, look at. So we've got the, uh, the executives, we've, we've got the champions, all right? Uh, once those are put in, into place, now it's time to do two separate trainings, okay? Those two separate trainings are number one, we, we have to start tra uh, training the change agents. And those change agents get trained in both Lean and Six Sigma. Now, Six Sigma Development Solutions, we, we do this a little differently. We split the trainings up. A lot of companies combine them into a methodology called Lean Six Sigma. Uh, we find that splitting up the two methodologies helps you to understand Lean as a separate methodology. And it is. It's, it's a very separate methodology. Um, and Six Sigma as a separate methodology. But in both of those trainings, we, we uh, talk a lot, we teach a lot, and we, we use a lot of simulations to show you how both methodologies synergize, how they work together, because they do very much work together. All right, so we, we've got the executives, we've got the champions, and we have got the change agents. The change agents' jobs are, are to enact change, to take on uh, projects to transform uh, the organization. But they can do nothing without the help of what we call the SMEs, subject matter experts. The subject matter experts uh, get trained in uh, a training called the white belt training. The white belt training, the, the purpose of the white belt training is to um, give everyone in the organization a, a very high level understanding of what both Lean and Six Sigma are. 
Because if we don't have that high level understanding of what both lean and six sigma are, uh, we're, we're going to be inherently fearful of, of what, the, what the end goal of these methodologies are. To us, lean and six sigma will be about getting rid of people, will be about reducing FTEs or full-time equivalencies. Another way of saying that is uh, people will, will get their heads chopped off, that they'll, they'll, they'll get laid off. And, and that's not what these methodologies are for. Now, I, I would bet that some of you have actually been in organizations that implemented Lean and Six Sigma, and that was their main goal, was to get rid of people. All right, uh, and, and I can also bet that those organizations today don't practice Lean and Six Sigma because if you, if you can't get buy-in from your SMEs, from the people on the floor, what I call uh, the PhDs of the process, the, the experts, if you can't get buy-in from the real people that, that make that company money, if you can't get their buy-in, um, these methodologies are going to fail. And if your purpose for implementing Lean and Six Sigma is to get rid of those people, you, you have you missed the boat. Because as we remove complexity, as we remove uh, uh, variation from a process, we're, we're going to find that we have processes that used to take us weeks that now take us hours. And, and once that word of mouth gets out, that our quality has increased exponentially, that the lead time of our products have decreased exponentially, our marketability is going, going to skyrocket. And, and why fire people when that happens? You're going to need more people. So that's the true, that's the true um, outcome of both Lean and Six Sigma. All right, so again, we've got the executives, uh, and then we have the champions, and then we have the, the change agents being trained along with, in parallel, the white belts. Once all this has happened, guess what? We built the we've we built the foundation. All right. Some other methodologies that might come into the foundation would be things like 5S. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about some of these methodologies because we only have an hour. But um, some there are a few methodologies which are really kind of the the starting point of lean uh, that that really help to quickly uh, transform a company. Transform. It's, it's almost a marketing tool. It, it changes the way a, a company looks, feels, uh, and that really adds to the momentum uh, of this impl implementation. So once you have again these these uh, the executives, champions, change agents, white belts, and a few of these initial methodologies um, put into place, then it's time for us to start systematically solving problems tackling opportunities, and systematically eliminating waste, all right? So in the waste elimination, that is, that's the responsibility of everyone in the organization. Everybody has the ability to identify and eliminate waste, but we can't just let everybody go out and, and become rogues to eliminate waste and, and go into their, their area and say, okay, this is waste, I'm going to get rid of it. Because the waste that you eliminate could, could, could actually detriment another process. So in between there, we have to have some kind of a system put in place to where everybody in the organization gets to, to identify waste, identify variation. But before they go and fix it, it has to be vetted. It, it has to it has to go before a committee of uh, people in order to understand uh, how that that waste or that variation affects the system, not just that person or that team in in their own microcosm. So uh, that that usually looks like uh, I'll give you an example in in a lot of uh, organizations that we put uh, put uh, or implement Lean and Six Sigma. Uh, we have something like a SharePoint database. Uh, in that database, we we uh, we have built uh, systems to where uh, on every desktop in the organization there there is a uh, there, there is a link, and that link it's it's usually a picture. Uh, that picture leads to 
leads to like a suggestion box. That suggestion box is really not suggestions, but it is uh, everybody in the organization's ability to identify waste and variation. Uh, and everybody has been trained on what that is. So they do that. Once they see waste or variation, they identify it. That goes into a database. That database is then looked at by green belts, black belts, champions, and a committee of SMEs. Uh, they use tools to then prioritize those projects. Those projects get prioritized in, into certain uh, segments, like lean projects or Six Sigma projects or just quick win projects. Uh, and, and there are a number of other different uh, segments of those projects. So once those projects get prioritized and put into those segments, the, that then goes out on the floor and is advertised um, to everybody on the floor. So you get to see your what you've identified as waste for variation turn into something that's actually tangible, that, that in most cases you're going to be a part of solving. Uh, and then that's, that starts the project, all right? So that's systematic waste elimination and problem solving. Now, problem solving, systematic problem solving, are really more the realm of the green belts and lean agents who are really one, one, one person. They're, they're taught both lean and Six Sigma. But they can't solve a problem without the help of the SME. Uh, the green belts and lean agents are, are useless with, without the SME. They only know the tools. They, they, they know the methodologies. The SME has the experience and the knowledge and the data. So a good implementation of Lean and Six Sigma is very uh, operator centric. We understand that the SME is the power. They have the knowledge. And, and the more that we can, we can uh, tap into that knowledge and the more the more comfortable we can make that, that SME feel, uh, the, the better the outcome is, is going to be. So over time, as we systematically solve problems and systematically eliminate waste, eventually uh, this is going to become culture. This is become, going to be the way we do things. And, and every, every corner of our organization is going to have some hand in both Lean and Six Sigma. All right. Um, and, and this is how the roof is built. The roof is constantly trying to point true north. It's never going to tr point true north. But again, th this is the end goal of lean to, to point true north. All right. That's that's just a, a uh, kind of a mantra in lean. Now, once we start to build the culture, then what you will see is your organization uh, – uh, transforming from a reactive organization to a learning organization. A reactive organization is basically well. I, I tell you one of the one of ways one of the ways that we we know that you know that, that you have a a organization that's not a learning organization is if uh, if when somebody creates a problem if there is an error a defect if it's better to sweep it under the rug. All right, because we know we're going to get in trouble. We sweep it under the rug um, so, we, so that, that we don't get in trouble. All right, that's not a learning organization. Process problems happen not from people. They happen because there's something wrong in the process. And that something wrong in the process is, is literally screaming at you, saying, please fix me. But by, by focusing on the person, by focusing on the operator. So – um, I'm going to take you not, through a, we're not a listening, quick, uh, we're, we're deaf uh, to the process story about enough. Six Sigma, right? We're not trying right. to solve so the problem. So we talked about we're lean, and lean trying is to really blame the person. Uh, about and that's getting never rid of going to transform About getting rid of waste. So right. you'll about see that there, as this foundation is built, steps as in the this house is built, you'll um, go from – an organization I've that seen, is very I've seen many reactive, processes very very go from uh, in some cases weeks secretive to because we literally don't want to take hours to organ an organization and if we had more where time there are I can tell you many many stories in place so if that you want to hear a lot happens, of these stories it, it's it stands um, out I, I'm we all know we all how here at the right? end of and I'll only do we all see it but we know so that it's a good thing that it shows you know because that gives us the ability to solve 
um, methodologies like Six Sigma and, and put them into something that makes a little more sense to you. All right, so I, I'm going to use the concept of the kicking coach. Now, uh, let's just say a uh, uh, football team. All right, we're, we're going to use just a, a fictitious football team, State University. And State University has uh, five kickers on its, uh, its, its kicking staff. All right, uh, and there's a kicking coach. So the coach says that there are no uh, no stars on my team. Everybody uh, has to try out on a Tuesday <coughs> for Saturday's game. So he gets them each up in front of the uh, the goal, 35 yards out uh, in the center of the field, center of, uh, of the goal. All right, and gives them 100 chances to kick. Kick the ball through the goal. Okay, he has got a um, RFID that he has on each of the balls, and he also has a way to see where that ball goes through the plane of the goal as the kicker's kicking. He's, he's got a screen that shows him exactly where it goes through the uh, plane of the goal. So the first kicker gets up. All right, let me back this up a little bit. The first kicker, the kicker in green, gets up and kicks 100 balls. Uh, kicks kicks them all to to the goal. Doesn't miss doesn't miss one time. All 100 balls to the goal. All right. Now most of you would say that's pretty good, uh, uh, and yes, it is. He he's very accurate at at, at least hitting the goal, but there's something that, that he's missing here. He's missing consistency. Uh, sometimes he kicks left, sometimes right, sometimes high, sometimes low. Uh, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't have, have consistency in his kicks. There's a lot of variation. So uh, second, third, and fourth kick, kicker get up, and they all do the same thing. Now, 400 balls have went through the goal. All right, 400, 400 footballs have passed the plane of the goal. None of them have missed. All right, so those four kickers are, again, pretty accurate, but they, they, um, they don't have a lot of consistency. Fifth kicker gets up to, to kick. Fifth kicker, a senior kicker, plays soccer in the offseason kicks 100 balls and he is the kicker in red all right so if I was to ask you if I was asking the question who are you going to pick for Saturday's game uh, most would say <clears throat> most would say red and and my my response to that always is well why did you pick the one in red when when the other four did miss well, they come back and they say, well, he's consistent. Um, he consistently splits the goal. And, and that's the whole concept of Six Sigma. Now, Lean doesn't understand this. Lean just says, as long as you kick between the goal, you're good. All right. Lean doesn't really see, see what the capability of that kicker is to split the goal. And that's a key word in, in Six Sigma, capability. All right, what is my capability to kick in the center of the goal? That fifth kicker's capability is a lot better than, than the other four. And again, Lean doesn't really understand this, this concept. Lean, Lean looks at either you kick through the goal post or you don't. So this is the difference between Lean and Six Sigma. All right. Six Sigma really looks at, uh, at, at the process through data, through, through quantitative data. So again, this coach took, took quantitative data of each kicker to help him understand who has the better capability. Now, how do you get to be that fifth kicker? How do you get to be that good? Well, first it takes natural ability, but even with natural ability, you're, you're never going to get that good. You have to have the coach. You have to have somebody that, that can really start 
understanding what are the inputs that are that are creating the output the output is that ball going to the goal wherever it goes to that goal that's the output the input is all of the the things that go into creating that kick so uh, an input could be the decibels of noise coming from the stadium the lumens of light from uh, from the lights in the stadium it could be the humidity the heat uh, the wind direction the wind speed uh, it could be the uh, how inflated the ball is uh, it could be your the kickers uh, angle of his or her head over the ball it could be the angle of uh, the kick all right thousands of inputs that that created that one that one kick that one time that that ball went to the goal the more the more consistent my inputs are the more consistent my output is going to be so those those first four kickers if you were to watch them kick over and over again you would see variation in the way that they kick you would see less variation in that fifth kicker his kicks were consistently the same therefore his output is consistently the same now think of that in an organization we, we we don't we don't really understand our inputs what we do is we react when our output is bad when our output is outside of the goalpost we then we then react by by adjusting something if our output is still outside of the goalpost we react by adjusting it again but we we, we never really take data to understand what what was the was the long-term effect of all these adjustments and the, how did all these adjustments interact with each other we, we just we just are reactive uh and may, and make you know cause and cause and effect adjustments uh but again we we don't see the long-term effect of what those are so six sigma is really about uh understanding those those 500 kicks and understanding the variation between the kickers uh, and all the inputs uh, that created those kicks and and that helps us to really understand the process through data that can help us to understand how those four kickers can become as good as that fifth kicker by understanding what are those key inputs that we need to improve on now a kicker can't get that good uh, by natural ability he needs a coach and that coach in an organization is the green belt the black belt the change agents their job is really to start looking at that data like that that coach looked at the, the data of the kick uh, of the ball going through the goal that helped him to start understanding uh, the the process of kicking through data so that that's that green belt that black belt that lean agent to start understanding the process through through data all right and it's amazing transformation when when all of a sudden you can start seeing that you know I've, I've got I've got three different nurses performing the same function in three different shifts but they're all doing it differently because I'm tracking their output through data and I can see that there's there's a huge amount of variation between them so what that tells me is is there is no one best practice we haven't really understood the best way to do it and and how to improve that and optimize that so that all three nurses do exactly the same thing so what what is this uh lean and six sigma uh, I, I said these these are really two different methodologies but but I, I look at these like a brain like like the human brain you you've got the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere okay two different hemispheres and, and they do you know some of the some different things one, one is more analytical uh, more number based and the other one is more artistic more tactile all right so the more analytical side is like six sigma the more artistic more tactile more visual is lean they, they both do separate things but there is a connection and they both work together all right they synergize and and if you if you start to understand both six sigma and lean 
as separate entities, then you can start seeing the synergy between the two and how they're so powerful when they work together. Really, Six Sigma is about understanding what causes variation in the process and, and how can we remove or reduce that variation to provide for a very consistent, therefore predictable output. Lean says, why this waste? Why, why this complexity? Why, do we, why are we doing these non-value added steps? Um, what, why, why are we doing things that, that don't equal value to the customer? Let's understand this process, understand what adds value and what doesn't, and see if we can if we can reduce complexity, if we can take steps out of the process. As we do that, we recover time, we recover capacity. Uh, we reduce ch the uh, chance for defects. We reduce operating costs. Um, and, and a lot of times we do this without spending w with spending very little or no money at all. Uh, a huge transformation. So uh, the DMAIC funnel. DMAIC is the, the methodology of Six Sigma. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Right. Define is basically define what's important, and, and that's really done by the customer, uh, and and we we define that uh, through metrics, through numbers, through through understanding what truly does a customer want. Measure the measure stage is really where we we measure how are we doing compared to what the customer wants, and usually there's a delta there. Usually there's there's a difference. Otherwise, we wouldn't be taking on you know, these Six Sigma projects and this Six Sigma implementation. Once we understand what that delta is, then it's time to analyze why, are, why, is, why is the delta there? Why are we not where the customer wants us to be? And that's done through the analyze phase, both in Lean and Six Sigma. All right, uh, the delta might be time, the delta might be complexity, the delta might be in, in, um, in continuous metrics like uh, the attributes of a part, right? So the, the analysis phase, analyze phase, just leads us to those three to five key inputs, those three to five things, and that's kind of a rule of thumb, um, that, that we're doing wrong, that, that we need to improve, we need to control. So once we find those, that leads us to now the fun part, which is improve. Improve says, you know, how, how can we improve and optimize those key inputs so that we can kick consistently in, in the middle of the goalpost? Now comes a hard part, control, because most people get pretty psyched up uh, once they, they improve the process. The control is basically, how do we make sure this, does, this doesn't sneak back to the way it was? All right. Uh, and this is not for the green belt to stand over the SME with a stick. It's, it's, it's our job to collaborate with the SME to understand what are the controls we can put in place to make sure that the SME understands the health of the process at all times. So he or she can see when the process is starting to become unhealthy and can therefore uh, put systems in place to bring it back into health, into statistical control. Uh, uh, control is really what, what makes this DMAIC process stand out. So uh, what do we learn? Well, we talked a little bit about uh, Six Sigma Development Solutions, uh, which is uh, the company that is bringing you this uh, a great educational informative webinar. We talked about to uh, your instructor is myself, Kevin Clay. Uh, we talked about uh, Lean and Six Sigma, how they, they are really two separate methodologies, but uh, they have a, a, a huge amount of synergy between the two. And, and to really learn one and not the other is doing yourself a disservice. Um, if you understand both of these methodologies, it, it will make you very, very uh, powerful. We talked a little, about, a little bit about the key principles of Lean. Um, and before we get into scheduling a strategy session, I, I, I'd like to, like to talk to you about you know, what, what, how we can help you uh, 
uh, in your career, in, in your organization. Uh, I, I do want to tell you that uh, I know this is a recorded webinar. So if you, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please send them to me uh, by email. Uh, you'll, you'll see my, my email at the, uh, at the end of this um, session. Uh, so send those to me. I will be happy to uh, to answer them. Um, send me send me any comments, uh, etc. Et all right. It uh, it all starts with the conversation. That that's kind of our motto here uh, at Six Sigma Development Solutions. You know our our, our job or we see. Our job is mentors. We see our job as teachers, um, and, and we really, we really are excited by watching the students uh, in in our classes, uh, the organizations we work with, excel. Uh, and, and we we take it uh, we take it very personal uh, that that we help you excel. Um, so, what we li would like to do. For those uh, those of you who are watching this uh, recorded webinar, is uh, we'd love to schedule uh, a discussion, a conversation with you, to to really kind of see how you tick, to see where uh, where you are in in your career, where you want to go in your career, where your organization is uh, in their lean and six sigma implementation, or if they're interested uh, in learning about. Uh, these methodologies, because I, I can tell you that these methodologies, if if put in correctly, if implemented, deployed correctly, has has a huge huge benefit. So that some of the questions you know we're, we're going to ask you is uh, what what are your what are your individual uh, lean and six sigma goals? You know what are your career goals? Um, are are you looking to start or are you looking to further your Lean and Six Sigma certifications. Um, we we have all belt certifications, uh, from white all the way up to uh, master black belt. Um, we have a Lean Agent course. Uh, we do many customized courses for our organizations. Um, so we we, we kind of like to see where you are, you know, again in in your career when it comes to lean, both Lean and Six Sigma. Uh, we're going to ask, you know, uh, does your company currently support Lean and Six Sigma? You know, what, what is the what is the uh, advancement that you uh, that that you can have within your organization? So, and and how can we help you to uh, achieve your career goals? Uh, we we've helped thousands of people. We I'm sorry, we have helped thousands of people. We have uh, helped many different organizations. Uh, we actually have um, uh, relationships with uh, many different uh, recruiting agencies that call us up on a daily basis, uh, wanting to know, uh, Kevin, ha have you and your colleagues, uh, do you have some, somebody that's trained in a certain methodology or a certain, um, a certain uh, concept? Um, and and we tell them you know the, these are who we have that uh, you know we we can give them a call and see what they what they think. Um, so we have uh, progressed many people through their careers in different organizations. Um, we only suggest those people who have went through our training. And the reason we do that is because we know we we know that you uh, you know what you're talking about uh, because we have we have carried you through your your uh, certification process and our certification process is not very easy uh, it, it, it is difficult um, but when you when you come out of the other end you you will know that uh, you understand both lean and six sigma um, uh, to to a very great uh, point so please uh, we would love to start a conversation with you uh, contact myself at uh, 479. 739-4940 or you can email me at kclay at six sigma dsi.com uh, i'd like to schedule a, a 30 minute conversation with you um and you know let let uh, myself or one of my uh one of my very experienced master black belts uh, uh talk to you about achieving your career goals 
So I hope you have uh, you you leave this webinar um, with more education and knowledge than you came came in with, and I hope to see you in other webinars. Thank you.